the ascension of the new Adam, the most significant change of direction since the fall of Adam. Greetings and thank you for watching this special video presentation entitled The Ascension of the New Adam, the most significant change in direction since the fall of Adam. This is undoubtedly the most significant topic which you could be exposed to at this, the most critical juncture in the history of the family of man. For we are faced with realities that no other generation has been faced with. Our health and welfare, life expectancy, and life spans are at an all-time low. Social, economic systems are consistently a portrait of confusion, ruin, and decay. At this very moment, we witness political turmoil, upheaval, and destabilization in the so-called Middle East, primarily the North African states. However, most paramount, for the first time, we are confronted with a very real possibility of extinction as our natural habitat or life support system, the Earth's ecological system, are being destroyed at a rate that is unprecedented. I ask for your full and undivided attention, for what will be shared with you will be nothing short of world shattering. That is to say, it will shatter the world you thought you knew, one that was actually created to ensure your demise and the destruction of all the elements of creation. Most importantly, however, for those of you who are truly seeking to know and apply truth, the revelatory concepts contained herein will be earth restoring, meaning once they are fully understood and applied, they will affect nothing less than the total restoration and regeneration of the earth and all of its inhabitants. This presentation has been organized into four parts. The introduction. Who are you? the death experience, hell on earth. Finally, the ascension, the way back. Throughout our presentation, we have referenced the ideas, concepts, and writings of Ben Ami, author of the Resurrection series. Ben Ami occupies a category all his own as the only man to reassemble the Genesis component for application in contemporary times. However, he may be considered the foremost designer and defender of the emerging new world. Finally, when referring to the Creator, we will use the historically accurate name Yah as it is rendered in the original Hebrew text of the Bible. Many of these concepts you will be hearing and seeing for the first time. Therefore, I encourage you to pause this video at any time you feel it necessary in order to review what you have heard and to allow yourself time to fully absorb the concepts. The more that you view and give serious consideration to this topic, the greater your comprehension will become until you are totally equipped with the tools necessary to effect not only a total change in your personal behavior and direction, but also to understand how to reverse the downward direction of the Adamic family on earth. These things being said, let us begin. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's a famous and often quoted scripture. 
Few, however, understand the full implications of the profound message that Yeshua was attempting to convey when those words were spoken. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John 8 and 32. What is first implied is that those to whom Yeshua was referring were in a state of bondage or captivity. Furthermore, what was holding them captive was something that had been given to them as a replacement or deadly substitute for that which they truly needed to free themselves, the truth. Truth, then, had been somehow concealed or hidden from them by someone. Who could have done such a thing, and how was it accomplished? It was accomplished in Yeshua's day the same way that it is done today, via the skillful manipulation of language and the introduction of ideas whose very essence are anti-life. Today, as in the days of Yeshua, those of evil intent have effected the enslavement of the human family by seizing control of the power to define. The power to define in the hands of evil men is a weapon of oppression and a satanic control method. However, the power to define in the hands of righteous men will bring forth godliness and holiness and peace. Ben Ami, God the Black Man in Truth, page 47. The power to define offensive. The power to direct minds and conditions that will cause specific results in a struggle. The power to define is as important as the power to control. In fact, the power to define is one of the greatest weapons that can be used to control men and nations. The power to define defensive. The power and ability to discern and to counterattack ideas, philosophies, and strategies employed against you by your adversary in order to defeat him and to be totally victorious in spiritual warfare. If the human family is to free itself, it will be critical to know what concepts have been redefined. Which concepts and ideas are so essential that they impact upon all of the basic elements vital to the health, welfare, and continued existence of life on earth? What truth don't we know? What language has been manipulated? The truth about the beginning, even our own true identity. These truths are contained in the Hebrew Testament of the Bible, deceptively labeled the Old Testament. The Old Testament was declared fulfilled by Eurocentric theology, which effectively sealed the book and the truths it contained despite the fact that it is the most widely published of all writings, virtually on the shelves of everyone's homes. Most significantly though, the Bible's original meanings were lost once they were removed from the original language and cultural context within which it was written. Hebrew For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue, have not the same force, sense in them. And not only these things, but the law itself, and the prophets, and the rest of the books, have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. The Apocrypha Prologue, Ecclesiasticus 1. While having access to various translations of the Bible, we are admonished to pay particular attention to the original version, the Hebrew. Other translations vary widely and often lack the original intensity and root meaning of the words and passages from which they are derived. Everlasting Life, page 12. And so the assault began, as it had to, at the very root, the source of the vital life-giving information bequeathed unto mankind in the Genesis. The Genesis Attack 
There were great book burnings of African literary works and historical references. The Roman Catholic Church forbade the reading of the Bible, and when the restrictions were finally lifted, the Hebrew canon, Old Testament, was still placed off limits. Imitation of Life, page 10. From the Times, October 5, 2005. Catholic Church no longer swears by truth of the Bible. By Ruth Gledhill, religion correspondent. The hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church has published a teaching document instructing the faithful that some parts of the Bible are not actually true. The Catholic bishops of England, Wales, and Scotland are warning their five million worshipers, as well as any others drawn to the study of Scripture, that they should not expect total accuracy from the Bible. We should not expect to find in Scripture full scientific accuracy or complete historical precision, they say, in the gift of Scripture. But the first eleven chapters of Genesis are among those that this country's Catholic bishops insist cannot be historical. At most, they say, they may contain historical traces. Why is the Genesis so important? Because it is the beginning. It is the root that bears the trunk, branches, and leaves of all other books in the Hebrew canon and every personage. Only the eternal wisdom idea, as revealed in the Genesis, can create the thought which will inspire the works toward the ultimate renewal of the creation. If the Genesis, which is the literary mainstay of biblical writings, is uprooted, all is lost. Imitation of Life, page 17. What great truth was so vital in the Genesis that the Catholic Church compromised its image of holiness to conceal? Nothing less than the truth of our identity, our purpose on earth, and all of the vital elements for sustaining life on earth. Who are you? Adam. Whenever the term Adam is used, the images that immediately register within the mind are those of a naked man and woman in a garden who had an unfortunate encounter with a talking snake. These images consistently include an apple, the consumption of which was so deadly that it resulted in the damnation of all of humanity. This depiction relegates the Genesis and Adam to little more than religious folklore at best, and at worst, mythology. Thus, having little to no practical significance in the lives of men, the Genesis and Adam have been effectively removed from our consciousness. Until now, the world has had little to no exposure to the Hebraically correct pronunciation of the term Adam, which has been erroneously transliterated as Adam. This bastardizing of the name of Yah's greatest creation was just the beginning of the process of pulling off the greatest hoax of all time, the concealing of the identity of the family of man. Hebraic meaning of Adam. And the Lord God formed man, Adam, of the dust of the ground. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Male and female created he them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Genesis 5, verses 1 and 2. Adam is not a personal name but is rather a classification for a particular species, civilization, named after the source from which they derived, the earth, soil, Adama. So we see that Adam was never a personal name at all, but a classification for a particular species, a civilization, named after the source from which they were derived. Adam and Adama. And the Lord God formed man, Adam, of the dust, afar, of the ground, Adama. Soil is called in the Hebrew language 
Adama. It is in the feminine form, rendering the contemporary phrase Mother Earth as consistent with the original idea. The intrinsic relationship between Adam and Adama may be easily verified by an analysis of the mineral content in the body of man, the Adamic form. The land, earth, soil is the biological substrate from which Yah created Adam, Genesis 2 and 7. Man, Adam, has a significant relationship to the source from which he was created. Adam is composed of all of the elements found in Adama, soil, iron, copper, gold, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, etc. Minister Yadiel, State of the World Forum, Keynote Address, 2002. Though all men possess this form, what distinguished Adam was a specialized form of intelligence called the breath of life in the Genesis. Adam, the Adamic form. The Adamic genealogy ties all nations into one physical form, reconnecting everyone to their maternal source of existence, Mother Earth, Adama. We are not, however, all connected to the same spirit, idea. The breath of life, divine intelligence. And the Lord God formed man, Adam, of the dust, afar, of the ground, Adama, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and Adam became a living soul. Genesis 2 and 7. The Creator who would think to design such a perfect creation, Adam, could not possibly have placed an inferior brain, mind, to oversee its functions. Certainly, the mind with which Adam was originally equipped was no less intricate and perfect than the physical apparatus that was placed under its charge and capable of overseeing the welfare of the complex structure under its command. We can concur that Adam's mind was capable of protecting, caring for, and sustaining Adam's internal and external life support systems, ecological order, physical immortality conquering death. You may have noted by now that the Genesis story renders all of the elements of life in the form of metaphor and allegorical language. The intelligence given unto Adam is called the breath of life to emphasize its critical nature. No one can live without breathing, neither can anyone experience true life if he or she is not in possession of Adamic intelligence, the breath of life. What would be the ultimate manifestation of the application of such an intelligence? An earthly paradise within which men would never die. Adam was created, after all, to live eternally and would have done so had he not eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Sound far-fetched? Consider the following. A remarkable experiment. The cell is immortal. It is merely the fluid in which it floats which degenerates. Renew this fluid at intervals give the cells something upon which to feed, and so far as we know, the pulsation of life may go on forever. Dr. Alexis Carroll, Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research.